What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how to create a trend line in MQL5. First thing first, though, where do, can you find this code? So you can find this code here in my GitHub. So the link will be in the description. But the only thing that you have to do is to go to the trending bot repository. Then after you come here, you go to MQL5. And here you have this file called line in which you have all this code. So. Let me explain you how to create this trend line because it's a little bit uh, complex. How do we do this? First, let me show you this in the paint and you will see that better. Basically, we need to set two points. And what are two points? So, for example, imagine a chart in which this is the X, which refers to the time. And this is the Y, which refers to the price. So we need to set two points. And then MQL5, what it's going to do is to connect them and create the line. But these points uh, have some information. And what is the information? For example, this one has a value in the Y and a value in the X. And the value of the X is basically the time of sale. Well, what I mean is the candle in which uh, it is shown this price. And this is the price in which you want to put the the value. So for example, it happens the same with this point. So you have a time and you also have a price. So you are going to see that in the code and you are going to see that it's very simple. But first thing first, what do you need in order to use this bot? Well, this uh, line. So first of all, you need one, one very, very important array, which is the MQL rates. So here you are going to store all the candles that you need. Next, you need another array to store the closes. And here you are going to store all the values of the closes that also these closes are also stored here in the candles. But I want to show you how to just uh, store the closes because this is very useful. So once you have these two arrays, ignore all, all these. I will explain that later. Once you have these two arrays declared, what you need is to initialize them and put them as series. So you have to use this function called on init. Uh, which will be executed once you call the bot. Only when you call the bot, this function will be executed. So, for example, here what's saying that candles is going to be a series and closes is going to be a series. And that's very useful. Next thing is that we need to update that line whenever there's a tick, whenever there's a price change. How do we do that? We use the function on tick. And this function is very useful because it gets, it gets called whenever a tick happens in the market, whenever there's a minor price change, whenever there's a change, basically. So what we do here in this function is first loading the values of the candles and the closes. And as you can see, these two functions are almost the same. So here with the copy rates, you are going to copy the candles. And what you need is to first put the symbol. This refers to the current symbol of the chart. This refers to the current period of the chart. This refers uh, to from which candle do you want to take values? This refers to how many candles do you want to take? And this refers to the place in which you want to store those candles. If you want more information about this, just double click here and press F1. And here you have all the information about that function and how to use it. So that's very useful. And as you can see here with the copy close, it is the same. The only important thing is that you need that this candles variables is a MQL rates variable and here that this is a double variable. That's the only thing that you need. Then what we need is to, for example, uh, take those Y values, those prices, and that depends on how you want to do it. So, for example, you could take a low and a high, a high and a low, the average, whatever. And in this case, what we are going to do is to take the average. And by the way, this variable max candles refers to this one. So here I'm putting the number of candles that I want to take and we are going to take a 100. So what I do now is that I store the average price of both halves. So for example, if I go here, this is the first half. Remember, if we go here to one chart, let's say that we are taking 10 candles, for example. This is the candle zero, and this is the candle, for example, 10. But this is the candle 20, and this is the candle 20, 10. So the first half has the bigger number, and the last half has the smaller number, because this one, which is the last half, 
has the goes from zero to ten. So once you know that. We can continue and you can see that in order to get the first average on the first half of the of the candles that we are going to take into account, what I do is that I basically call this function. And how does this function work? It's truly very simple. It's just doing an average. And what I do is that, hey, give me a start index and give me an end index and I will uh, compute the average of that of that of the uh, of those candles and for that i use the closest array so what i do basically is that i go from the start to the end and i i add the values of the closest and finally what i do is that i calc uh, i compute the average basically dividing uh, by the number of elements here so once you do that you have here the average between two between two indexes and which indexes do we have to use? So for example, if you want the first average, as I said before, this first goes from a, from a big number to another, uh, to a more big number. It doesn't go from zero to whatever. It goes from, for example, to from 10 to 20. So in this case, it goes from 50, which is max candles divided by two to 100. So you are going to compute the first half average. And here, the second half goes from 0 to 50. So, for example, the second half refers to this, and the first half refers to this. That's it. Once you've done that, you have the y values of the of what I said. So, for example, you have this value, and you have now this value. What we need to store now is this value and this value. And here, again, you can do a lot of things, but depending on what you want, you do it in one way or another. The way I'm doing it is that I'm just putting one point at the beginning to in the in the 100 point and at the end in the zero point. And you can see that here. So for example, this is the last point and this is the first point. Well, this is the first point because it has a bigger value. And this is the last point, the last candle. And as you can see here, this function is the object create. And this function creates an object, a line. How do we do this? First, you have to set here the window in which you want to put uh, this object. And if you put here a zero, you are just saying, hey, put it in the current chart. And that's perfect. That's what we want. Then give it a name. This name is important because if you want to change whatever, you have to use it. Then you have to put here that it is going to be a type or well, an, an object of type trend, a line that has uh, that is moving. Then finally, you have to put here the sub window. And now we have to set those points that I told you. So the first point, the point which is more at the end, the point of the candles that have a bigger, a bigger value is uh, going to be put it here. So for example, here, what you say is that, okay, the X value, which was the time is going to be the uh, first candle. So give me, give me the time of the first candle. Finally, I put here the average, the price of the first half. And here what I do is the give me the time of the last candle. And here I'm going to put the average of the last candle. One important thing is that as you are seeing here, I'm deleting the object line. Why? Because in order to update this line, you have to delete it. So imagine you create it once. And if you try to uh, update it, like it will not do whatever whatever you want to do. So the best thing to do is to delete it and then create it again. And this variable is just to check if it was created or not. So for example, this variable starts as false. And since this is false, this will not delete anything. This will not be executed. And we put here true because now we execute this. So then here, what I do is just changing the color and changing the width. And it's very simple. We use the function object set integer. And here again, we put here the window in which we want to change that. Here, we put here the number, of, well, the name of the line. Then we say that we want to change the object property of the, well, the color property of the line. And we are going to put here a color aqua. And here, finally, we put here the width and we put here a number which refers to the width. So yeah, this is very simple. Yeah, these two functions are the same. And now we can see how does this work. So for example, let's compile 
And now let's come here to MetaTrader. Let's go to the RUSD. And here, what you have to put is to use the line, the line uh, MetaTrader file, well, the name file. And now you have to just test it. So, whenever you press enter, as you can see here, we have this line that is taking 100 candles. And it takes the... Well, and each point refers to the average of each half. So, for example, let's just stop this. Let's say that this is the half. So, what I'm doing here is that I'm taking the average all of all these values, of all these candles, of all these closes, and I'm putting that value here at the beginning because the time in which I'm putting this point is here at the beginning, at the, at the mass candles minus one. The other thing that I'm doing is that I'm taking the other half, computing the average of that half, and finally putting that value here at the beginning, well, at the end in this case. So, as you can see here, this is changing, this is moving, and if we put here to move faster, it will be also very cool. So, for example, look how it moves depending on the values. It looks like a boat, <laughs> but Knowing how to do this will allow you to do crazy things. So, for example, let's put this, yeah, like super fast. Well, it, it ended. But let's change now the value of the max candles. And you are going to see that, yeah, this is very useful. So let's put here a 20, for example. So now if we execute this again, let me put this uh, slower because otherwise we are not going to see anything. Now we are taking into account just 20 candles. And as you can see the line moves more because the values move more and yeah this is basically it this is how you create a trend line in mql5 as you have seen it is very useful and very funny because it looks like a boat it's moving like eh. <laughs> but yeah if you like the video give it a like share subscribe and see you in the next one Mm -hmm. Estoy bajando todo, lo siento, te quedas en no, pero este no es